couple of weeks ago, I upset the LBA community, LeBron apologist community, mm. when I said their leader, LeBron James, suffers from fame and social media addiction. In the aftermath of LeBron's Hey Look at Me annex at his son's AAU game, I said fame is an addiction more dangerous than cocaine. Nate Burleson and other members of the LBA community rushed to the internet to <laughs> preach to the world that LeBron is a good daddy. Nate, dog. He take care of his kids. Well, at the risk of upsetting LBAers, <laughs> I'm going to once again point out that the latest of the latest example of the negative side effects of LeBron's addiction to fame. The 34-year-old basketball star claims to have identified football's most unique challenge and further claims to have invented a solution glass helmets. Uh, when I first saw this, I thought it was a comedy skit. Mm. I thought LeBron was having some fun. And then I watched a four-minute YouTube video titled The Glass Helmet Project, tackling one of football's most unique challenges. Oh, sweet Jesus. I think LeBron is serious. LeBron's sidekick, Maverick Carter, some nondescript former NFL player, Andrew Hawkins, and an artist are pushing the notion that glass helmets, or symbolic glass helmets, would liberate and humanize oppressed NFL players. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. I don't know. <laughs> Back in college, Man, stop. I experimented with marijuana. Uh -oh. Don't do it, kids. It's a waste of time. Nope, we either is overrated. But what LeBron is doing here reminds me of what we used to do in college. There were a handful of serious smokers on the football team, and they'd call me and be like, Big Will, come over. <laughs> Big Will. We got that purple dank. I Straight from uh, Cali. Dang. Ooh, wee. Ooh, ah, wee. Ah, ah. That's how LeBron feels about fame. He's calling NFL players. Antonio, AB, come over, dog. <laughs> Me and Mav got that dodo do This glass helmet gonna increase your fame 20 times over. Mm. See, when you're addicted to something, you think everybody would be happier if they were addicted to it, too. LeBron would be shocked to learn that not everyone wants to be famous. In fact, most people don't want to be famous. Oh, they might like a little hit of fame once or twice a year. It's cool. But on a day-to-day -day basis, most people just want to be left alone to enjoy their family and friends in anonymity. Besides, football isn't broken. It's three to five times more popular than basketball. No one has a problem recognizing Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, Patrick Mahomes, J.J. Watt, Von Miller, mm. Zeke Elliott, Drew Brees, Odell Beckham Jr., Baker Mayfield, Cam Newton, Eli Manning. Do I need to go on? No one knows anyone in college basketball. You recognize these guys? Trevor Lawrence, Jalen Hurts, Touchdown Tua, mm. LeBron, put the pipe and the glass helmet down. Sit down at your kid's game. <laughs> Stop with the Taco Tuesday foolishness. This commentary isn't an elaborate metaphor, LeBron. Your brain is on fame. Mm. Just say no. All right, guys, Marcellus, get us started. You we can get us started. You already <laughs> got us started. <laughs> MC Hammer started. Is this proof <sighs> LeBron's addicted to fame? <sighs> Look, all right, let me just acknowledge the elephant in the room. What the hell is this transparent resin glass helmet? I mean, it makes <laughs> no sense, but it actually does land somewhere, and the blame is not his fame or his seeking of fame. I blame business, and I blame Hollywood, and this is why. If anybody's ever had an idea, if anyone's ever thought of a business, thought of a product, the first thing they want to know beyond the idea is who's your team. Then, to get traction, that team has to activate, usually in celebrity or in fame, to make it get traction. LeBron James is guilty of being only one thing. Not fame-controlled, not social media-controlled. He's King Midas. And when King Midas has the Midas touch, everything he's a part of gets traction. Everything he's a part of basically gets greenlit regardless of concept. So this is what has happened to That's LeBron. I I've seen it. I've been in too many pitch meetings. You can say the best thing in the world. So who's associated with that? If you say LeBron James, or better yet, LeBron James is the one saying it to you, okay, what do we have to do? We're, we're, we're involved. We're, we're engaged. And so since he's King Midas, and I will be as guilty as him, when you got the Midas touch, you touch everything, even if it doesn't make any sense. So I'm not blaming social media. I'm not blaming fame. I'm blaming the fact that this dude could do no wrong 
even when he does something like this that seems wrong? Mm. To answer your question, is he addicted to fame? I have to say no. And the reason I say that is there hasn't been an athlete in the history of sports that ha that's more famous than LeBron James. Yeah. I mean, he can go in any city in America across the country, Bill and he's... Gates, he, Bill Gates don't want no more money. And he, but <laughs> Warren Buffett don't want no you more You said, money. is he addicted to fame? No, no, he's no, no, already no. famous. No, I got and, it. And so this helmet thing is not going to work. I mean, it's catchy. It's like, ah, oh, because once you put the ear pads and everything else in it, and you know, we're still in the same you know what, situation. You know what Hugh Hefner did? Uh-oh. I done had enough Playboy bunnies. I don't need no more. <laughs> or did he say, bring me some more? <laughs> of course. Next, so, again, <laughs> LeBron, it, bang, you, that's you, the addiction. <laughs> I got some family that used to like crack. They couldn't get enough of it. Yeah. It's not like, oh, I, I've had enough. Yeah, it's like, no, more. I want more. more. Fame. I don't see how much bigger <laughs> he can get from that perspective. It's, you we, think Steve Ballmer don't want more if, money? If you really think about this, and mm -hmm. I'm sure they thought, once you put all the ear pads and everything else, you're in the same helmet. Well, no, <laughs> there's no doubt about that. And Who the knows? logos. He, he's, <laughs> and the logos. They're saying it's a metaphor, <laughs> that right. it's not reality, but again, you heard Maverick. They didn't make it sound like it was, I thought it was a metaphor, but it, it, they're, say, they're making it sound like they want guys to be in clear helmets. <laughs> Are we getting catfished up here? I mean, I, Are we getting no, catfished? No, this they're 100% saying that. Oh. And, and first first right. and foremost, let's, let's, start, let's start with the fact that this is, once again, like Taco Tuesday. Takeo Spikes published a book called Under the Helmet. The, the, the illustration on the front of the book is a clear helmet. So you're not even being original with what it is that you're bringing to the table to Ooh. begin with. Shots out to Takeo for bringing stories and relevance to what we are as football players. By the way, an all-pro pro bowl football player. Who will be here tomorrow okay. on our show? Shots out. Yeah. All right. So Need to sue LeBron. The, the interesting thing. <laughs> wow. How, how about it? <laughs> the, I, I just think that he is he is in overdrive with empowering people. I have no mm. I have no problem with him trying to empower others. His his school that that he has is is performing at a super high level. The things that he's doing, the the empowerment of his boys to be able to do what they're doing, I have no problem with him enterprising off of what he brings to the table. I'm just a tad bit offended by pulling out a flimsy helmet that looks like a prototype with, with a 1978, <laughs> 79 face mask frame, mm -mm, mm -mm. Uh, no type of guts, anything to, to the helmet. Look how flimsy <laughs> that is. That that looks like a penny jar. That looks like what you put your pennies and your, your nickels in. Uh, uh, that is that is as flimsy an attempt to say you're doing something. And and the and, and listen, I, I I'm not a LeBron James apologist or a hater. Neither one. I like LeBron James, but if you're going to pro if you're going to pull out a prototype, at least have a profound story connected to what it is that you're saying. I felt like it was a feeble attempt to sound well, super educated about well, what you're me, presenting. Oh, you thought he sounded so, super educated? I, I, no. Feeble no. attempt. <laughs> feeble. Feeble. Huh? feeble. Oh, okay. It was bad. feeble. Um, <laughs> I, yes. I, I got to push back at that one. All right, somebody... <laughs> Somebody said that helmet could be some, uh, some at the concession stand. You get the stadium nachos. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Popcorn. Yes. Yes. Popcorn. <laughs> it wins there. Um, I will push back and say one thing also about the presentation that really struck me is, like, if you're going to do this and you know it's a stretch, but to just do this, you got to sound like you know what you're talking <laughs> he about. Say. The designer went up there and said, and, and we have this cage bar. <laughs> it's what you said, though. When you're LeBron James and your name's mask. attached to it, it's gonna gain traction. And I love Hawk. I love Lil Hawk. I love Lil Hawk. Have Jerry Rice. Have somebody. Well, I like wouldn't even talk about Andrew Hawk. Shout out to Columbia and the guy is smart and Andrew Hawk is kills it. I'm he not is? going there. Yeah, he went to Columbia. Okay, man, he did, he wasn't even he went to, to the Columbia, top. Of, but... He went to the top of his seat, man. <laughs> but let me say this: yeah. what was profound about what they're saying is what Takeo's talking about, and what we hear a lot of times. Go ahead, the, go ahead. A lot of this is about the sports culture. There is a helmet psychology. A lot of women actually bring this up. They say, you know why y'all football players always act up when y'all get out and y'all always doing too much, spending way more money than every other basketball, baseball. Baseball's more reserved. Basketball's just chilling. Y'all know who we are. Football. Ah! You know why they say that? I'm going to tell you why they say that. Because nobody know who you are. Since you're hiding in anonymity, you want to all of a sudden take, do too much. I take offense to that. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm just telling I you what's a narrative. I take offense to that stereotype. So to, I 
ain't, I, I haven't met those people. I, I'm you sorry. Are damn, you you are not people. one of them. I ain't never but acted up because I, I was not. I, Marcellus, man, look, I, I must, so that's I, a narrative out there. I, I think, and this is not This is just me keeping it real, I think in my building this summer, mm. there's been four or five NBA players that lived there. We had one on the show. Yeah, yeah no, yeah. no. And, and no offense to any of them. I had to ask who they were. Mm -hmm. Tall guys, black dudes, tatted up. Mm -hmm. Hey, blah, blah. I, I don't, you don't know, there's, there's the top echelon of NBA players oh, yeah. that you know on there site. You mm -hmm. Just like the top echelon of football players you know on site. This whole thing that football players are somehow uh, anonymous because they're playing under helmets untrue. and people don't treat them like humans. Will y'all stop? That's bold. That's not Will true, man. You were recognized, huh? That's not oh, true. Oh, I'm recognized because I'm big. <laughs> I mean... But most but guys are always... Players. Players. No, 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 no. There are six, seventh men in the NBA that's going around here. Everybody know. Ain't no it backups depends in the NFL. It depends on what team they play know. for. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. And be sure to check out more of the best clips from Speak For Yourself or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.